number of mitochondria per cell relative to aged controls. We see a reduction in Christe architecture, which is really the business end of the mitochondria where energy is made. And you start to see increasing mutations in mitochondrial DNA. Mitochondria are important in several different cell types in dry AMD. Um, RPE cells, of course, are mitochondrial rich, and there is an extremely rich mitochondrial layer of uh, the photoreceptors called the ellipsoid zone, uh, and that is a phase three approvable endpoint per FDA guidance. The mechanism of our lead compound, elamipratide, as well as our pipeline compound, 272, which we are also developing for ophthalmic diseases, um, is to target a cardiolipin, a phospholipid is needed to establish that curved Christe architecture of the inner mitochondrial membrane. Again, that's the business end of the mitochondria where energy is made. The curvature is important to optimize energy production, but importantly, if you look at cardiolipin degradation on the lower right-hand corner, um, that actually increases oxidative stress when the Christe architecture is lost. So again, our compound elamipratide is interacting with cardiolipin to restore normal mitochondrial structure and function. With that, we see increased ATP production, decreased oxidative stress, and decreased inflammation. So just looking at that on an like electron microgram um, from a diabetic mouse model, looking at RPE cells, you can see a healthy mitochondria on your left. Uh, in the middle, with disease, you see the Christe gone and restoration again with alamipratide. We've seen uh, RPE protection in various cell models, but I would say the money slide from us preclinically was really looking at pattern ERG and seeing normalization of the B wave, which is essentially a proxy for photoreceptor function and vision. So when we think about the very complicated pathology of dry AMD, I think we're all thrilled to see approaches that can start to treat this disease, really targeting complement, which comes in at the tail end of the pathological cascade. Um, but targeting mitochondrial dysfunction allows us to intervene at multiple points in this pathway. And we have preclinical data and now clinical data to support this intervention. So again, Doug, Doug told this story already, but when we think about the area of photoreceptor loss, um, certainly we saw this at baseline in our patients, it's about twice the size of GA. So the GA is really, in, and it's in blue here, it's really growing into that area of photoreceptor loss. So putting a ring fence around the photoreceptor loss should eventually slow the GA progression, but importantly also help preserve and maybe improve vision if you can address the bioenergetics issue. In a phase one clinical trial in patients with GA, this was 19 patients, six months, no control, we did see improvements in low light visual acuity, which was our primary assessment of visual function in our studies. Um, and when we looked post hoc, that was most highly associated with baseline ellipsoid zone health. And so that was an endpoint that we carried into the phase two on a pre-specified basis. The phase two clinical trial enrolled 176 patients with non-central GA. We did not see a separation on geographic atrophy. We did, however, see a photoreceptor protective signal looking at ellipsoid zone total attenuation, and that was associated with changes in visual function. So I'll get to the data. A quick note, this is a once daily sub-Q administration, typically um, in the abdomen. We see no ocular side effects. We've seen no off-target safety effects. There are mild to moderate injection site reactions, and it would then be bilateral administration. So we saw a 43% protective effect on the photoreceptors. Um, this is looking at the area uh, where photoreceptors are zero microns, so it's total death of the photoreceptors. FDA agrees that this is an approvable phase three endpoint. Uh, really wanting to see a separation in the slope of change um, over the treatment period. We also saw improvement in categorical low light visual acuity for patients. And again, the changes in vision were closely associated with the changes in the ellipsoid zone integrity over time. So seeing improvement actually in vision um, is certainly important for patients in this disease. Why do we think that's happening? So if there are 
you know, impaired photoreceptors at baseline. Think about um, your partial easy attenuation where the photoreceptors are somewhere between 20 microns and zero. We've seen across models that elamivertide can rescue mitochondria as well as cells and improve function. So that's really where we think we have the opportunity to improve vision. We certainly saw that the patients whose vision improved were the patients who had some preserved ellipsoid zone function in the center of the fovea. We're about to initiate two phase three uh, clinical trials in dry AMD. These will be global trials. We'll be meeting with the FDA to finalize protocol design end of year and expect to start enrolling patients um, in the first, second quarter, so right around April of next year. Where do we fit in the overall picture? So again, uh, I think that with complement inhibition, we finally have options for patients, I think, coming at this from a different angle to restore bioenergetics may give us the opportunity to actually improve vision for patients, hopefully at least preserve vision for patients. And with our mode of administration and bilateral targeting, uh, we hope that we can provide a more convenient option for patients for at-home self-administration of therapy. Thanks for your time.